After initially looking like Boston was going to send Malcolm Brogdon to the Clippers and draft capital to Washington in exchange for Kristaps Porzingis, they instead traded away a key piece of their core in Marcus Smart in order to get Porzingis, as well as receiving the 25th pick in this year's draft and a future Golden State first round pick in the process. The Grizzlies also sent Tyus Jones to the Wizards, and Boston sent Gallinari, Mike Muscala, and the 35th overall pick in this year's draft to Washington. This trade seems pretty polarizing so far. I'm not gonna talk too much about the Wizards side of things because to me, they've kind of just been dealing with the hand that they've been dealt as far as their rebuild goes and setting themselves up for the future. Porzingis was in a situation where he could either opt into the final year of his contract and agree to a sign and trade, or he could decline his player option and become an unrestricted free agent, in which case Washington would have lost him for absolutely nothing. So instead they decided to get something for him rather than let him walk. So they got some expiring deals in the process as well as some draft capital. I also think it's awesome that they got Tyus Jones in this deal. I think he's one of the most underrated point guards in the NBA. He's gonna be a free agent next off season. So this works out for Washington because if he comes in and he proves that he can be a reliable starting guard, then you can re-sign him during the off season. And if he walks, then they just have more cap space to work with. So this was kind of a win-win for them. Now let's talk about the Celtics and the Grizzlies because this is where things get a little bit complicated. A lot of Celtics fans are understandably really upset about this trade. Grizzlies fans though, they seem pretty happy with it. For the Grizzlies, this trade makes a lot of sense considering Dylan Brooks won't be returning next season. And they're gonna have to weather at least 25 games without John ja Morant. So getting Marcus Smart to pair alongside their defensive player of the year in Jaron Jackson Jr. just made a lot of sense. Defensively, those two are gonna be a powerhouse together. And I don't think that Smart's gonna have an issue slotting into whatever role the Grizzlies need him to fill once John ja Morant returns to the lineup. Losing Tyus, who was an expiring contract, in exchange for a veteran presence that can also contribute to winning at a high level is exactly what they needed as a team and smart's going to be under contract until 2026 so they're going to have him around for a while let's pivot over to the celtics side of things to all the celtics fans watching this right now i know you're really upset about losing smart i totally understand that he's been the heart and the soul of this team for almost a decade but i do think it's important to look at what porzingis brings to the table and what his presence means for this team going forward as they try to return to the finals and win a championship. The Celtics are in a tough position that a lot of teams encounter where they've been running it back with largely the same core for years now. And after the unfortunate Eastern Conference Finals loss to the Heat, there was probably an internal dialogue in the front office about whether or not it might be time to shake things up a little bit and see if you can jumpstart things again. Does it suck that Smart was the one that ended up being the guy that had to go in the process of making that happen? Absolutely. But do I think the Celtics improved their roster in the process of doing so? Yes, but with some caveats. One of the big concerns with Porzingis is his health. He struggled to consistently stay on the court throughout pretty much his entire career, so it's understandable that this was gonna be a concern when you trade for him. But I will say that this isn't as concerning when you consider his presence is gonna take excess minutes and load away from Horford and Robert Williams. And so in theory, they may be collectively healthier as a result of the three of them not having to carry as much of a load and they can more evenly distribute things. Each guy will be sort of a contingency plan if one gets injured. Really, this trade just rounds out their front court depth, which is something that I think definitely needed to be addressed. Now, one thing that I really love about this trade for Boston that I don't think a lot of people realize is that Porzingis is really, really good at operating as a post passing hub. And this area of his game is where I'm really excited to see how he fits alongside what Boston is doing on the offensive end. The Wizards used him in a lot of delay actions like this one where Washington is going to set up for a Chicago set with Denny screening for Beal to come up and get a handoff. Beal's going to reject the screen and then Denny is going to fake as if he's coming to get a handoff before he instead cuts up the middle and Porzingis finds him for the finish. Now consider that same play with Tatum and Brown. As a matter of fact, if we go back to the 2021-22 season, we can see that Boston was doing similar stuff under Ime Udoka. They're set up for a Chicago action, and Tatum looks like he's going to be setting the down screen for Brown to come up and get the handoff from Rob, but Tatum slips the screen and Rob finds him on the cut for the slam. 
Similarly here, Tatum is in the corner with Pritchard setting up for the pin down, but Tatum rejects it to go baseline and Rob is going to find him so he can get the easy two points. Not only is the fit great between him and Tatum, but these same exact principles apply with Brown as well, with Brown experiencing a ton of success with these off-ball actions being run by a center up top. This play involves Porzingis posting up on the wing with Beal above him. Porzingis gets the ball and Beal is going to burst by him to get the handoff, and he has a huge head of steam to get to the basket for the finish. Now look at this play from the Celtics back in 2021. Brown feeds Smart before immediately cutting by him to get the give and go and it's going to lead to the finish at the rim. This is such a perfect fit on the offensive end because it's proven that it works. Porzingis can do the same mid to high post playmaking that Rob Williams and Al Horford do, but what makes it even better is that Porzingis brings even more to the table than those guys on the offensive end. I also really like the fact that Porzingis is good attacking off the catch, which can draw help defenders on his drives and subsequently create perimeter opportunities for guys on the wing. I think overall, he's just gonna make their offense a little bit more dynamic with a lot of that coming through his passing ability. Additionally, he's one of the best post scorers in the entire NBA, and his creation ability from this area is going to make it to where Jalen and Jason aren't always going to be the ones that have to do the bulk of the creation. Just to give you an idea of how good he is at scoring out of the post, of all players that posted up at least three times a game last season, he averaged the second most points per possession out of all 13 of those players. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how good Tatum is at creating offense off the catch. With Porzingis operating as a post scorer and drawing increased defensive attention as a result of that post scoring ability, Tatum is going to have a lot of opportunities to leverage his ability to create for himself and others off the catch whenever Porzingis kicks out to him when he's getting doubled in the post. This same concept, of course, applies to Jalen Brown. Porzingis might not quite be what he was hyped up to be prior to the NBA and early on in his career on the defensive end but he's still a very capable defender. Obviously losing Smart in the trade is gonna have an impact on their defense, but they still have Derek White, who is an all NBA second team defender, and I'd say he's one of the two best guard defenders in the entire league right now. So while they do lose Smart's defensive contributions, I don't think this trade is going to be one that just absolutely destroys their defense. I do have a big caveat with this trade though and whether or not I'm ready to consider it a good trade for the Celtics. I already mentioned the injury stuff which is pretty much always going to be a caveat for any player, but a lot of how this trade is viewed is going to hinge a lot on what the Celtics do throughout the rest of the offseason. If this is the only trade that they make and they otherwise just sit back and do nothing, then I'm going to have some concerns about this trade. They still need to address their consistent lack of backcourt playmaking. Grant Williams' status is still hanging in the balance a little bit, so they still have plenty of work to do to flesh out this roster and plug some of the holes that we saw during the playoffs. While I think this is a trade that the Celtics might have cornered themselves into and panicked a little bit at the last second when the Malcolm Brogdon framework originally fell through, I still don't think that it's necessarily a bad trade in a vacuum. Porzingis is still a very, very good player, coming off the best season of his career thus far, and they might be able to package the picks that they got in this trade to try and facilitate further upgrades across the roster. But complacency is their worst enemy here, so sitting back and relaxing after making this trade is the last thing that they want to do. Huge thank you to all of my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button while you're here. That's the easiest way to support the channel and help me continue making content and helps me out a ton. Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.